Perfect, let me start by sharing my screen. So hold on a second. Yep. And here we have my slides. By the way, if you want to have access to these slides at this moment, you can go to this link here, bit.ly slash CNCF open tracing. Okay. Uh, some information about me. My name is Rafael Benevides. I work at, at Oracle as a cloud native development advocate. And essentially, I'm a Java developer with a little bit of passion for Node.js, okay? So before starting, let me tell you a story. This story may uh, sound a little bit familiar to you because in a, in a, in a not very distant past, we, what we saw on the IT in industry is that developers were throwing their package, their ad facts uh, over the what's called wall of confusion. So the ops was responsible to place the artifact on the on production and make it work. And that worked very well for many, many years while the server was up, right? But everything went went fine until we receive a message that the website is down. When that happens, everybody starts screaming, thinking that it's the end of the world. So everybody starts to be in panic, screaming and yelling, uh, what's happening? Uh, who should we call? Who should we uh, contact to fix that, that problem? And of course, the operation people say, okay, that's not a problem because we have monitoring. We are aware that the website is down. Okay, uh, <laughs> it's, it, does not, it does not solve the problem, but what Ops sees is that uh, it's just a red flag on their dashboard. They, just, they are just aware that something bad happened. And what developers usually do in this, um, in this situation. Calmly, they ask to the, to the operation people, what does the log show? And when they, uh, the ops people read the logs, they see just a bunch of words, just like in matrix. They don't understand anything about the logs. And at that moment, you can imagine the developers screaming. So show me the logs, give me the logs so I can analyze them. And then with the logs in their hands, developers can um, uh, easily uh, analyze the stack trace and find the cause of the problem. And it's just like Matrix movie again. The developers can see uh, more than just words. They see the real information behind all those characters on, on the screen. That was what happened in, in the past. But let's uh, let's back to the present and see what's happening. What's happening now in the IT industry? Well, first of all, what's very important is that Dev and Ops are working together. There is no more more the wall of confusion. There there are no more silos that they that place them apart. That's really important. And what and another thing that changed is that we are seeing microservices. We are seeing cloud cloud native applications. And those applications, they, those microservices, they don't reside together on a single server. Instead, they are spread over a network of services connected to each other talking to each other. And of course, some of them may have their own database. Okay, so what we saw in the old school is a monolithic application. In, in this new school, we see microservices uh, deployed inside containers, uh, running on top of Kubernetes as their uh, orchestration platform. Okay, but some things never change. Like for example, we still have more monitoring and that still, still works very well. But we don't call monitoring anymore. It's now, the, the word that we see 
is observability. And I think that's really nice, this Twitter from Cindy Suredran. Uh, it's, it says, be observability because devs don't like to do monitoring. We need to package it in a new nomenclature, nomenclature to make it palatable and trendy. So uh, what we see nowadays about, about, obs uh, obs uh, ob about monitoring is that it's called observability. But in, in fact, observability is more than just monitoring. It, it consists on three pillars. Uh, it consists of metrics, it consists of logging, and it consists of tracing. And the focus of this presentation is about tracing, okay? Because, for example, suppose that you see this, um, this diagram in your screen. Can you spot the invocation order? Suppose that you don't see these numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you uh, just guess the order or the latency, latency how, how long it took to execute how, uh, each one of these uh, microservices or these components? or in a cause of an error, who caused that error, okay? Of course, if you change that diagram just a little bit and transform that in a timeline view, things will get more clear. You can see now in this timeline view how long it took to invoke each component. Um, you can see that there are no, no errors. It, it's a se serial invocation and each one of them were called. We can see how long it took and we saw the order, how long, and that there are no waivers. So tracing is very important to understand your application. You can understand the critical path, you can understand the latency, and in a case of failure, you can understand why did it fail, why it, it failed, okay? And the, as I said, the focus of this, uh, pre this presentation is tracing, and I will talk about open tracing. So what is open, tra what is open tracing? Open tracing is a, is a specification developed to address the problem of API incompatibility between different distributed tracing systems. There, there were many initiatives to, to perform distributed tracing. Uh, we can mention Zipkin, Jagger, uh, there are many others that I can't recall at this moment, but the idea is to create a unique API. And this API uh, was specified and became what's called open tracing. Op open tracing is uh, the specification, the open tracing specification is part of CNCF. And the idea of the API is to have no relation to platforms or vendors, okay? But to understand the open trace specification, we need to understand some terminologies. Like for example, what is a trace? So a trace is, uh, is for example, a click on a button. When you click on a button, it will span uh, several operations. That is a single trace. So the trace covers this, that request across all services it touches. It consists of the, all the spans for the request, okay? So what is a span? Well, the span is a, basically the operation. So it consists of the, the operation name, the start and finish timestamps, tags, logs, and a reference. So what is a reference? Is a relationship with other spans. How so uh, span relationships? Well, we can have parallel invocation. So a, a reference from one span to another will be the, a child of. So a span can have multiple children. So each span will be child of a parent span. So usually it's made for parallel invocation. Or a serial invocation can be follows from. So a span will, be, uh, will follows from another span. So that's a, a, a relationship for a span. Well, I said that spans contains, uh, contain logs. So what is a span logs? Well, it's a, just, it's a key value pair that just like the name says, gives you uh, log information. So for example, uh, message, opening a connection to MySQL server at uh, 127.001. 
or can't connect to MySQL Server uh, and the error message. So again, this the log is used for uh, a debugging purpose or an information purpose for the for the application or for the tracing itself. You can also create tags. Tags are also a key value pair, but they are user defined. There, there is a semantic convention. Let me open it here for you. So you can see that uh, you can have a tag called component, which the type is a string. And you can say, what is the component that performs that operation? Or DB instance, DB statement, DB type. Is it a SQL, Cassandra, HBase, Redis, DB user, the error message? Or the, or, uh, sorry, the error, uh, is it true or false? The HTTP method and so on. So here you, you can see some examples of uh, tags. Again, you have the key, which, is the, which follows a semantic convention and the value, which specifies what is the DB instance, what is the HTTP method or status code or error and so on, okay? And you can have also a baggage which is also a key value pair, but the idea of the baggage is that you can place an information on a, on a specific operation, and then you can capture that information in another operation. So, so it's a, a, cross pro, a, a cross process boundaries, okay? So here you have the, an example of a span. So we have operation name, DB query. So we have an idea that it performs a database query. You have a time span, a time stamp for the time that it began or and the time that it finished. You have the tags, so you can see here that the instance is customers, and the statement was select from my table where foo equals bar. You have the log message, so in this case we know that this operation uh, we're not able to complete because it could not connect connect to my SQL Server. You have also the span context. So what is the trace ID that, uh, what is this span ID and also the, the, the baggage items that you will, someone, the developer placed in this span, okay? Well, so if open tracing is a specification, we need an implementation. In this talk, I will use Jagger. Uh, Jagger was inspired by Dape, Dapper and OpenZipkin, Open and it's a distributed system released and as an open source by Uber. Uh, open uh, it's open tracing compatible, as I said, it's an uh, implementation of open tracing. And there are several libraries like Go, Java, Node, Python, and C++. Look here, the architecture of Jagger. So you have your application, and you will use a Jagger client on dependent of the language of your application. So if you wrote a Java application, you, you will use a Java client, a Jagger client, or a Node Jagger client. This Jagger client will send the expense through, a UDP, through the UDP protocol to a Jagger agent. The Jagger agent will collect this, those spans and send it to the Jagger collector. The Jagger collector will store the data, the, the spans uh, in a database that's maintained by a Spark jobs. And there is also a Jagger query that gives you a new UI so you can uh, consume that, those, those information, okay? And why Jagger? Uh, people who used to uh, work with distributed systems, they, they saw Zipkin uh, much more than Jagger. And the answer is here that I took from this blog post. Despite Zipkin being around for a while longer and being more major, Jagger has seen some good adoption thanks to several factors such as a good language coverage coverage of open trace compatible clients, as we saw, Go, Java, Node, C++, Python, low memory footprint, and a modern and, uh, modern and scalable design, as we saw here. So that's why I'm focusing on Jagger as an implementation. So my favorite part of the, this talk is to show a demo. 
And for the demo, I will open here the Jagger UI. So you can see, this is the Jagger UI. And I will perform an invocation on an, on an endpoint. I will not explain to you what this endpoint is doing because I want you to follow me and analyze the tracing information. And then we will figure out what this, the application is doing. Okay, so I invoked, I invoked the endpoint. So you can see here, microservice A received the parameter Raphael called microservice B, saved to database, saved to Kafka, and invoked the microservice C that says real hello Raphael. Let's see that information. So here in the Jagger UI, we can analyze, for example, the dependencies. We can see that a microservice A called microservice B, uh, microservice A called 12 times microservice B, and microservice B called microservice C four times. So we can see uh, this diagram, okay? Uh, and then we have here the services. We have microservice A, B, and C. Let's start by microservice A. I can uh, filter by operations. Let me bring everything. I can bring what uh, has been captured the last hour, last two hours, last 24 hours, and so on. So let me keep last hour and give me the limit of 20 results. So I have here, I did some tests before starting my, my, the presentation and I have here the invocation that I just performed. <clears throat> if I click in this uh, HTTP request, we can analyze the application here. We can see that Microservice A received a request in this path, slash zero, slash Raphael. It, it did work because we have a, stat, a HTTP status code of 200. The component invoked here was the Heldon web server. And we have some log information that was uh, captured by these handles here. Okay, then we have uh, some other interceptors, security interceptors. And finally, my, the class that I wrote, which is com.rafabene.rest resource and the method is serial, received the request on its JAX-RS server. So we know that it's a Java application using the JAX-RS, RS, which is an API for REST resources on the server. And then before calling the microservice B, we, have, we had that class and this method calling another method uh, called call microservice B serial. Then we have an interceptor, uh, and we have the JAX-RS client invoking this endpoint, microservice B8080 slash DB slash Raphael. Interceptor for microservice A, and then finally, microservice B received the request on the Java web servlet. So we know that microservice B was written in Java because a Java server received the request. Um, and then we performed some, oper some database operation here. We can see here that even the database calls were traced. So we have a component Java JDBC. We have the, the database instance called Open Tracing. And we can see here that it's a MySQL. So we know that this, the information was, the, the database behind this application is a MySQL. Um, and the statement is here, select next vol from hibernate sequence for update. So again, we know that this application is a Java using uh, MySQL connected through hibernate. Then we called the update sequence. And finally, uh, even the insert into message, the values, we can see it here. Okay, uh, let me see what else I can, I can find it here. Oh, for example, uh, I also place it in the microservice A, a log information. So I can even open here the log, the parameter that I received is Raphael. So I place it that information for log purpose. So I can uh, make sure, I can make, uh, make sure that I'm working on the proper request. And then after invoking the microservice B, we have microservice, 
microservice A calling B again, but another endpoint. This endpoint here calls a Kafka topic. So we have a component here called Java, Java Kafka. Uh, I'm, use, I'm producing a message and place it, placing it in a topic called my topic. And finally, microservice B called microservice C. So we can see it here, the, the server receiving the requests. We have the logs, request received, uh, event hello, Rafael. And that gives give us an, a really nice idea of what this application is doing. Microservice A calls microservice B and saves to database. Microservice A calls microservice B and saves to Kafka. And microservice A calls microservice B that calls microservice C. Only by looking at this information, we can have that idea. I will do something uh, interesting here. I will uh, stop a service because I started all those servers here using Docker Compose. So you can, hit, can see here microservice A, B, and C. We have MySQL and we have a Kafka and we have Jagger using the all-in-one Linux image. Uh, this image runs all those uh, architectures part of, the, of Jagger in a single image. So let me stop here, uh, Docker Compose, stop MySQL. Okay, so let, let's see what, what happens if MySQL is stopped. So now MySQL is stopped, let's perform a request in our endpoint. There is a timeout that I placed it on microservice A. So microservice A uh, gives me um, a timeout, but microservice B is still, tr is, is still trying to connect to, 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 to MySQL. You can see it's in the log information. So what we see here is the microservice A only because microservice B is, uh, is still working, but if I update, uh, now we have microservice B called uh, because it report finally gave up of trying to connect to MySQL. Now we can see that this invocation happened with an error. So there are four errors here. And that is really nice to debug or to monitor our application. So if something went wrong, we can find what gives a, give us an error, and we can open and see all those four errors here. I have the general error, which uh, was the HTTP 500, which I received here, HTTP 500. I also have my error where the, my JAX-RS component tried, tried to connect. And of course, there was a, a processing exception because I placed a timeout. And microservice B, tried to connect to, to um, MySQL. But in this case, suppose that I don't know that MySQL is, is stopped. I can even come here to the log message and see here that uh, there is a JDBC connection exception unable to acquire JDBC connection and could not open JPA entity manager. And what else? unable to acquire JDBC connection, connection not available, communication link failure, communication link failure, MySQL name or, or service not known. So again, we are able to really, really, really understand what the, the, the application is doing inside the bug in the application itself, because it was really well traced by um, op the open tracing API. Let's Start MySQL again. Let's perform a new request. Okay, everything's working. And we can see now that the new trace has no errors. Okay, that gives you a, an, an idea, but I believe that you might be interested on understand how to use the Open Tracing API. Well, it's really easy to use the Open Tracing API. First, you need to instantiate, instantiate a tracer. Different, there are different approaches by language or framework. So once that you have a tracer, 
to create a span, you will use tracer font dot build span with the name of the operation and start active to make that span active in a thread local context. So the span uh, will be the same while until you, you finish the span and while you are in the same thread. While you are in the same thread, the span context is the same. To create a tag or a log, you will call the method set tag with the name of the tag and the value or log with the, uh, the log information. To work with baggage items, you can call set baggage item or get baggage item. And at the end of the operation, you will call span.finish. When you finish the span, the API will send the span to the Jagger agent, okay? Well, but you saw that uh, this, the span context uh, has been propagated from a service A to a service B. How that was possible if I just said that the span context is thread local? Well, you can propagate the context by using some HTTP headers. The default is to use the, uh, the, the one of the first implementations that came from Zipkin is to use the B3 headers. So uh, a client tracer before calling the next server, it injects in the request uh, all those headers here, XB3 trace ID, XB3 parent span ID, span ID and samples. And then when the server tracer receives the request, it extracts the information and then it knows the trace ID, parent span ID, span ID and so on, okay? But there, there's also another format here, which is the Uber headers, which is much more simple. You have just one header called Uber tracer trace ID. Uh, it's composed by a trace ID, a span ID, the parent span ID and the flags. Okay, uh, if you look here at the logs, you can see, let me uh, look here, span reported. So we have here the parent span ID, you can see that's the same. Then you have the span ID. What else? Then the parent span ID, which is also the same for this spans here. And then the flags. Here it's just the number one as the flag, which I really don't know what's, what's the meaning of the flag, flag is being one, okay? And it's also good to know that there is an initiative to create trace specific uh, headers under the W3C specification, okay? So this is the link that shows the, this, this work of having a specific tracer, uh, tracing headers uh, as a, um, a standard for, for tracing propagation, okay? Well, now suppose that you are a Java developer and you are using um, Java microprofile. If you are using Java microprofile to every request, every, every request that, you re that your server receives on that JAX-RS server, is traced automatically. And the context propagation, suppose that you use a JAX-RS client uh, or a microprofile REST client, the requests on the server are traced also autom automatically. So you don't need to uh, call, call any API to inject the Uber headers on the request. Those requests are automatically propagated by the JAX-RS client or REST client. Method calls, you must use the traced annotation. And a synchronous call, you, the, the server span must be activated via API in the asynchronous thread. So let me show you those examples. Let me open here, uh, open here some source code. And let me get this, the service here. Okay, so um, note here that to invoke, let me see here, go call microservice B serial. Hold on a second, let me understand here. 
yeah. Here I'm using a uh, microprofile uh, REST client. Okay, note here that it's, it's just an interface. When I call that interface here, those, those, the, the endpoint methods, I didn't need to uh, do anything to propagate the context. I just invoked, it's automatically performed. I just needed to place traced to make this method uh, traced, as you saw here, call me. Call microservice B serial. I it, it was traced because I placed this annotation uh, annotation traced here because I use uh, parallel invocation, so I have a synchronous thread. I had to get the server span, and inside the thread, I had to activate the server span inside this thread. So it's really easy to use, and really really uh, handy. But if suppose that you are a Spring Boot developer, again, every method with the annotation REST controller is traced automatically. But their Spring Boot or Spring does not have the traced annotation. Although they are creating one, we have it here open for since 2018, and they are working on that annotation. Okay. So if you want to, uh, in instead of using the tracer annotation, you can get the tracer and build your, uh, your own span and activate it, okay? For context propagation, in the REST template, you need to, in, uh, to, to use uh, a tracing REST template interceptor. So for example, uh, here in the microservice B, I created, let me see where. Here, uh, for the REST template, I create, I used the set interceptor to use a tracing REST template interceptor. Okay, it's also, it's part of a, uh, an API to, that works, that integrates open tracing with Spring. Okay, and the, the same way for a synchronous call, you have to activate the service span, span inside a synchronous thread. Just, uh, okay. Well, what about that database? For a database, there is also another library that you just, uh, it's a Java JDBC library where you just use the class, uh, the driver, the driver, uh, the JDBC driver class as IO open tracing contrib JDBC tracing driver. And for the uh, connection string, you just use the tracing as part of it. So again, if you look here uh, in my uh, Spring Boot application, I use the driver class name as IO open tracing contrib, et cetera. And the connection string is here, JDBC tracing MySQL. I just need to do that and all JDBC calls will be traced automatically. If you are using uh, with Kafka, again, you just need to uh, overwrite the consumer factory or the producer factory to use a tracing consumer factory or, or a tracing producer factory, placing, uh, uh, using in the constructor the, the tracer that you got somehow. You can see that here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, because I'm using a, pro a producer, I created a tracing producer factory getting the tracer. Okay. Suppose that you are Node.js developer. If you are Node.js developer, there is, there is a, a library called uh, Jagger Client that integrates really well. Uh, the, uh, uh, there, there's a library called Express Open Tracing that integrates Express with, uh, um, with Open Tracing. So you just need to, uh, to, uh, uh, to inform to Express that you are using a new middleware informing what is the tracer. So you can get the tracing 
Tracer using the Jagger client. Uh, so I'm not, it's also good to be aware how you configure Jagger. Jagger can be configured uh, using some environment variables. Uh, there is a small detail here for the host because uh, usually you, you will use the port 6821, but for Node.js applications, you, you need to use the port 6832 because of a, a, a small difference in the protocol. Then you can use environment variables to configure the name of the servers, then the name of the service, uh, how uh, frequently you will consume the expense. Is it for all requests or 10% of the request or 50% of the request? And then you will say, where is the Jagger agent running? You can see that here. For example, if you open my Docker Compose here, I have all the information for my microservice A. So I have, I inform here the, that I'm sending the spans to, to a, a Jagger host called Jagger, which is the, this name here, the name of the service. Uh, of course, different APIs can change the name a little bit. So for example, for uh, Spring Boot, you can see that it's a little bit different uh, I, uh, there is a prefix here, open tracing, Jagger UDP, UDP sender host, Jagger, the port 6831. And this microservice C, which is written in, in, in Node.js, uses the port 6832. This is really good because uh, uh, you can run uh, open tracing inside a Kubernetes cluster. For, uh, for example, you can integrate that with Istio. I don't know how many of you are aware of Istio, but before Istio, Istio we place discovery, load balancer, resilience, metrics, and even tracing uh, as libraries, as external libraries for our application. Now with Istio, uh, we can have all those things running inside sidecar containers. Uh, the good thing, uh, uh, is that Jagger is already part of Istio. So you will have uh, tracing for free, but there are some things that you need to be aware. First, uh, the Istio sidecar, which is uh, based on Envoy, which is Envoy, generates B3 header, is not Uber headers. So uh, if they are not provided by requests. So if you want to work uh, with the, uh, with uh, uh, open tracing inside Istio, remember to use B3 headers. And another inf information here, although an Istio sidecar will process both inbound and outbound requests for an, an associated application instance, it has no implicit ways of correlation the outbound, the outbound request to the inbound request that calls them. The only way this correlation can be achieved is if the application propagates relevant information, uh, in that case, headers from the inbound request to the outbound request. So you gain, you can have, if you adopt these two, you will have uh, Jagger and tracing for free, but your application needs to correlate the inbound and outbound B3 headers that your information provides. Like for example, uh, if you go here to this, I have here a deployment YAML for Kubernetes. You can see that I had to configure uh, my application to use B3 headers. Okay, the same thing happened for, um, uh, for the other microservices. Let me find it here, Kubernetes deployment. Yeah, microservice B. Uh, enable B3 propagation, true. So every time that I'm using with Istio, I need to use B3 headers. And it's just simple, just configure open tracing, okay? Uh, if you want to know more, there is an excellent open tracing tutorials in this link here. Uh, you, have, uh, you have tutorials for C Sharp, Go, Java, Node.js, and Python. And for each one of them, you will have lessons like the basic hello world, context and tracing functions, tracing RPC requests, baggage, and extra credit. 
So if you are a Node.js developer, you, you will have essentially the same lessons. Or if you are a C-sharp developer, essentially the same lessons. It, it's a really nice uh, resource. And also, if you want to use a really simple demo, just like I, I presented to you, you can go to my repository, slash uh, rafaben slash tracing demo, where you can see the source code for uh, Microprof Java and my Java and Microprofile in the microservice A, or Java with Spring Boot in microservice B, and microservice C using Node.js. Okay. So, uh, so I hope that you enjoyed. If you want to, um, I suggest to you that go that go to my uh, to Twitter and follow me at, using this Twitter handle at Rafa Bene, which is my Twitter handle. And I will stop now to answer the questions that you might have. Okay. Questions can be posed in the chat function, Q&A, or raising your hand. Nice, so no questions so far. Okay, pop up some new questions. So is there an integration with Prometheus? There is an integration, uh, Istio has an integration of, uh, with Prometheus, but uh, Open Tracing does not have. Uh, open Tracing focus only on, on tracing, implemented by Jagger in this case. You can use Zipkin, but not with Prometheus. As I am aware, Prometheus is just for metrics and it does not consume spans so the, it can uh, create that graphic with the span relationship, okay? But with Istio, you can have Jagger, Prometheus, Grafana, and everything very well integrated, okay? From Tim, will application code for open tracing need to be completely rewritten to support, in, to support an open telemetry? Well, I'm not aware of that because I, I have not, I, I didn't dig in in open telemetry. I, um, I hear a lot about that, but I have never worked with it. So I, I really cannot answer that. Okay, Tim, so, so sorry. Okay, so it seems to be the end. Oh, there is one more question. That's really nice. If we are using a SaaS monitoring service, are there adapter available? Yeah, that's a really good question because there are some adapters. Let me see if I can find it online. Uh, open tracing adapters. I know that there are, there are several uh, adapters um, let me see. I think it's uh, in a uh, in a repository called Contrib. Contrib Open Tracing. Yeah, third part open tracing contributors. So let me open here my share my screen again so you can have an idea. So you can see here the third part open tracing API contrib contributions. So we have Java with J JMX, Spring, J Spring Jagger, Spring Cloud, Java JDBC, or Java, Java Trace Resolver, Kafka Client, Rebin MQ, HTTP Client. Wow, a, a lot of Java AWS SDK, uh, Redis. Pardon my wow. interruption, there's one minute left. Okay, thank you for making me aware. Uh, for Python, C Sharp, Net, Net Core. So yeah, you can just browse these more than 100 repositories. Probably you will find something that might fit you or you can contribute and be, uh, become one more contributor. Okay, so this is the end. I don't think I have time to answer uh, one, uh, one more question. And I really thank you all for joining this session.